Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Doing Business in Bentonville. I'm Andy Wilson. I'm the executive director, and thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate the support that you're giving us, and, and thank you again. It means so much to all of us here at Doing Bus Business in Bentonville. Okay, my guest today is Brendan Howe. Brendan, welcome. Thank you. I'll tell you, this is going to be great because I have been on the site, okay? And we're going to talk about what Brendan's doing. But before we get into that, we've got to talk about, okay, Brendan, you're from New Zealand, correct? Yes, yeah, born and raised in New Zealand. Okay, all right. Well, I heard that you had quite a trip to get to Arkansas. How did you get to Arkansas? Well, just the usual method, um, New Zealand, San Francisco, Miami, Arkansas. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know too many people have made that round, but we're glad you were in Northwest Arkansas. Welcome to Arkansas, and we're, we're, we're glad. I got to visit Brendan's space that we're going to get into a bit. It's still under construction, but let's talk about you first before we get into this new thing. Now, uh, you've been an entrepreneur for what, over 10 years? Yes, correct. All right, one, wonderful. Well, what are some of the things that you have invested in and created? So talk about some of those, those that technology stuff that you've been involved in. Yeah, so uh, I've been in the startup space, you know, as you mentioned, for the last 10 years. Um, that was how I ended up in the U.S. originally. So um, my brother and I created a fan engagement platform called Drop It. Mm -hmm. So it's a 60 second reverse auction and we developed it in New Zealand. And then I came to the U S landed in San Francisco and we did a lot of product development with the 49ers mm -hmm. at the Levi stadium. Mm -hmm. And then we got that product, right. We got it live, um, did a season with the Phoenix suns and then did some major league baseball work and then eventually ended up uh, doing activations in formula one. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was, that was quite a journey. It was quite a sort of baptism by fire coming into the U.S. technology market from New Zealand right. and then working with these major league teams. It was right. very interesting. Right. I, I, I can't imagine. And, you know, when I was researching uh, that product that you're in, you, it's fascinating. In a, yeah, it was, yeah. It was something that we created um, to really sort of engage fans in, in live event setting. Yes. Um, so... Yeah, the, the sort of whole premise how that worked was it was a 60 second reverse auction. Mm -hmm. So we'd auction off things like if you're in a Phoenix Suns game, we could auction off courtside seat upgrades mm -hmm. and a locker room tour. So mm -hmm. things that you couldn't necessarily buy. Right. Um, it'd start at full price. So I think that package was around $2,000. Mm -hmm. And then every second, the price would drop. Mm -hmm. So the game is in 60 seconds, the price is zero. <laughs> so you wait as long as you can for the price to drop. But the right. first bid, it ends the auction. Mm. So you're in a game of chicken against everyone, <laughs> but you, you have to hold your finger on the screen the whole time. Yeah. So uh, right. then when someone ends the auction, uh, everyone's phones explode, the video boards explode, and the winner's <laughs> face comes up. Oh, wow. That's exciting. Well, I, yeah, that had to be fun. It, it was super fun, but it was yeah. also super interesting because we got a lot of data for the um, brand partners. Right. So we can tell who's engaging, what they're engaging in, right. how long they're engaging for. Right. And we'd provide bounce back offers afterwards. Right. So like with Mitsubishi, we drove people into the dealerships to go and take test right. drives. So it was quite a valuable tool for actually yeah. gaining insights into the right. consumers. You know, I, I, I enjoy talking to entrepreneurs because your vision, you probably don't sleep very much. You're probably <laughs> awake. You're thinking all the time. Is that, is that pretty close? Yeah. There's a lot of thinking going on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's not that sensible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of my great friends, uh, he's, he's an entrepreneur, and he called me yesterday, and he said, I couldn't sleep. I went, don't tell me, because I know it's another project, you know, because cause, cause he didn't sleep. So it's, it's another idea, right? <laughs> exactly. I love it. Exactly. Okay, one of the things I want to ask you about before we get into this thing is that uh, you worked in the uh, New Zealand aircraft industry. Yes, yeah, that was um, that was my kind of... Um, original career was aircraft engineering. Yes. So I used to work for Air New Zealand, um, the company that Greg Foran works for. Oh, yeah. yeah so, that's yeah. exactly where I was going with this. <laughs> you know, I have to mention Greg. Yeah. We yeah. worked together at Walmart, so uh, we love Greg. Right, yeah. yeah. So um, I haven't actually had the opportunity to connect with Greg yet, but um, yeah. I think I'm going to when I head back to New Zealand yeah. uh, next month. Yeah. So. Well, I tell you, Greg did a great job at Walmart. He really did. He People loved, the associates loved him, and we all did. And he was so passionate about retail. And, so, and he made such wonderful um, impact on Walmart. 
and now I'm, I'm happy that uh, now I know someone that knows him. So let's put you two guys together. So <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right. Now what we want to do, we want to move to your latest launch. Um, now, low loft. Okay. So let's just t- talk about low loft. I had the opportunity for our guests to actually get a tour of the facility recently. And I'm telling you, I'm very excited for us to get into this. What? So talk about low loft. What's your mission around low loft? So really it was, it's a solution to a problem that a lot of companies have. Um, maybe it'd be helpful to sort of tell a backstory about how we created the concept. Absolutely. Please. So, uh, in 2019, I took a partial exit from Drop It, the, the fan engagement platform, um, and then started importing face masks during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So we did a lot of business importing product from China. Mm-hmm. And then we thought, hey, why don't we actually make these things in the US? So that was part of my engineering background, kicking in a mm-hmm. lot machines. And um, I'm really bullish about bringing manufacturing back onshore. So... Uh, invested in some equipment for manufacturing and then a friend had just moved here and said hey you should come and check this part of part of the world out mm-hmm. um, could be a good place to set the factory up um so we ordered the equipment turned up in town and then um we had a minor problem that we had nowhere to set up mm-hmm. so we needed about five thousand square feet for a year right um but we'd come from outside the property business so we didn't understand that you just can't get five thousand square feet for a year right um so basically I harassed all the local realtors and then got a meeting with a gentleman, Bill Stribling. He's got a 280,000 square foot facility, um, just by Sam's club in Rogers. Mm-hmm. And he let us build a 2000 square foot micro assembly plant in the middle. So it was literally me and the father-in-law ground the concrete. I epoxied for six hours straight, which I'll never do again. It's like rolling chewing gum. <laughs> um, and then we, we dropped the ceiling down. Um, put a PVC curtain around and created a clean room in the middle of this big kind of just normal sort of grubby warehouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then people saw what we'd done and asked if they could share the space. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of a light bulb moment for me because I mm-hmm. thought, uh, this looks like there's demand for this. Mm-hmm. Why don't we combine the concept of office co-working with warehousing? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's essentially what we did. So it was just a solution to a problem that we had. Wow. It turns out a lot of other companies have the same issue. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, this facility uh, that is located in Rogers, Arkansas, yes. correct? And uh, so, again, um, s- describe because describe that it's you have you have different size space. Mm-hmm. So, if I um, it, okay, I, ha- I am I have product, and I have outgrown my garage. Okay, and I need a place to work. I need technology. I need I need a, a place to meet clients. I need all that. So walk us through that part of your mission there with with, with how you're going to service those needs. Okay. So basically the front 10 to 15% is, it's kind of like common space and like an office co-working environment. Mm-hmm. So kind of similar to what you see at the ledger. Mm-hmm. Now we have the reception space. We have hot desk areas to work from, shared kitchen space, Mm -hmm. uh, conference room space. Mm -hmm. So that's all available to the members that have the micro warehouses out the back. Right. Uh, We also have dedicated offices for companies that just need office space Mm -hmm. or you may need a warehouse bus and office. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the main kind of nuts and bolts of the place is these micro warehouses. So they range from 150 square feet up Mm -hmm. to 1,500 square feet. Mm Mm-hmm. And they're available to rent on a monthly basis. Okay. So we've really kind of introduced a ton of flexibility into the model. Mm -hmm. And the location's fully staffed as well. So we have a community lead out front Mm -hmm. that welcomes people in. If you've got a meeting, check them in, Mm -hmm. get them set up. All right. Uh, Just kind of runs the location to make sure all the members have everything they need. Mm -hmm. And then we have a warehouse manager. So they assist with Mm -hmm. um, unloading, loading. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're a member that has space with us and you're not there when a shipment comes in, we'll receive it for you and we can put it away also. That's all included in the cost. Wow. So we really kind of take a lot of the bottlenecks out of the basic logistics for mm-hmm. small companies and as we're discovering, even large companies that want a small footprint. Right, right. Well, as you know, um, supply chain, uh, 
we've had lots of issues, especially since COVID. And, and uh, this concept is, looks like to me that you're going to be able to fill this gap. There's a gap there. You're going to be able to fill this gap. That's huge. Uh, so how, how are you reaching out and to, to your to potential clients? How are you marketing uh, to that? Then uh, I want to get into, you know, when, when is this going to be ready and when is it going to be open and all that. And then, then we'll talk about this, this whole process uh, around this, what I guess what we call this ecosystem mm-hmm. of, of warehousing. So, let's... yeah, so there's a few different ways we get uh, people on board, you know, new members. One of the keys is to engage the local community. Okay. So we're very engaged with like Startup Junkie. Mm-hmm. Um, and a few of the other entrepreneur support organizations, right. um, the University of Arkansas, um, through our investors, like, um, you know, runway group have been very supportive and, mm-hmm. and sending people Good. through to us. Good. Um, so, and, and the, the real estate websites like LoopNet mm-hmm. and, and we also have campaigns running on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google ad campaigns. So there's kind of like a number of different sources that feed into the funnel. Um, but we're actually, we are open now. So 1st of September. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, you open. So the doors are open. Awesome. Um, in the first two weeks we achieved, uh, occupancy of just over 30%. So our One. target was 13%. Okay. Oh, um, and our okay. target for the end of October is 27%. So we're actually, yeah. in the first two weeks we achieved our first two months of Good. target occupancy. That's wonderful. Well, I'm great. Congratulations. Thank you. And we want to help you too. And of course, we'll we'll post all this information because uh, you have the podcast. Plus, we'll post all this on our website because we want to help get the word out because there's such a need, uh, you know, in this space. Uh, for, so now, um, so let's let's talk about um, then the technology uh, about this. And you you talked about you the people who are going to coming in. They get they they received. How are you going to track all that? How does that how's that all going to work for your clients? Uh, so currently we have a platform that if any packages come in, we scan them mm-hmm. and then the members get notified that there's a package there for them. Mm-hmm. So the technology layer is very light right now, mm-hmm. but in my last startup, Drop It, I ran the engineering team. Mm-hmm. We built the whole platform from scratch. Okay. So I personally, I've got a lot of experience in developing applications and running the engineers to mm-hmm. achieve the business outcomes. Mm-hmm. So we've got some pretty bold plans around the technology layer for the business, mm-hmm. um, around warehouse management systems, um, different tools for picking and packing, shipping, um, and also for ourselves for site selection. Mm-hmm. So so we're, we're building out a very robust technology right. platform to both help us select locations and right. help our members in the location gain access to enterprise tools mm-hmm. that they wouldn't normally be able to access mm-hmm. to help their businesses. Right. Wonderful. You know, one of the things doing business in Bentonville, our focus, our mission is about demystifying omnichannel. Omnichannel, as you know, is huge, just major. It's how we do life today and how we, or, you know, you know, and all. So let's talk about omnichannel for a moment. How does, how does your mission and your organization fit into this omnichannel uh, phenomena, this experience. How's that work? There's a couple of different ways we can kind of support that. Uh, With the way we're selecting locations, we're really positioning ourselves as last mile delivery micro hubs. Mm -hmm. So we're not targeting traditional warehouse sort of parks or industrial Mm -hmm. zones. We're really more focused on being in suburban environments. Mm -hmm. So that's where the downtown Rogers location is ideal. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of in a place where a warehouse probably shouldn't be, um, which means there's a lot of you know, consumers around mm-hmm. that makes it a great spot for um, grocery distribution. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, on, on a small scale, sure. Um, and yeah, part of that site selection process is looking at assets that are underutilized. Mm-hmm. So we've got a big focus on retail boxes. Makes uh, sense. Converting retail boxes into mm-hmm. Um, our concept Mm -hmm. because we find there are good locations there's a lot of um built up population around them Mm -hmm. there's plenty of parking right um and we can get them cheap 
And and you know, I, as you know, I know you track this. And and Walmart is 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 a major focus right now about expanding the assortment. Of, uh, you know, they just had this huge event in Las Vegas where they focused on, you know, people that that is starting up. That it's new getting into this whole omnichannel space. So it's perfect timing. It seems to be perfect timing, so not just because Walmart's focused on it, but I think from the consumer, our expectation of of getting our product in a day or a day and no more than two, maybe the same day even. And that that your organization your facility gives that opportunity to have same day delivery, correct? Exactly, yeah. And that's that's a big focus for us is yeah. that uh, rapid delivery. Yes. Um that's why we're yeah, as I mentioned, positioning ourselves near built up urban areas. Um, we've mm-hmm. also we had a drone company come down a couple of weeks ago <laughs> for that exact reason. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because there's a sure because we've we've got quite a and a captive audience around us. You do. Um, well, and I think that's what led me to the, you know, the next question, uh, you know, what what sets Lolof apart from other organ- other companies similar? What, and you, you've, you've already talked about a lot of the, uh, how you focus on the client and, and, and receiving merchandise, if they're not there, all of that. What are other components that sets Lolof apart? Um, one big thing is, yeah, there's very few providers in the space that we're in. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, just the scarcity of companies like ours mm-hmm. um, is, is one of the, the sort of main drivers. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, if if companies are looking for a solution, there's really, you can work from home, mm-hmm. you can try to work from a storage unit. Mm-hmm. Um, you can try 3PL mm-hmm. or a five-year lease. Mm-hmm. Oh, Okay. So there's not nice. really there's not really many options, and they're mm-hmm. all quite restrictive. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've actually had companies that have taken that journey, work from home, tried storage, mm-hmm. tried three field, and then come to us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we, we are get out of the house. I got yeah. the garage back. <laughs> so it's funny because initially we built it because we, we we referred to Lowloft as a platform mm-hmm. because we really see ourselves as a physical you know, version of a platform. Right. There's so many different use cases for us. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we've got small companies selling products online. Uh, we've got a company in there that services all the Starbucks coffee machines in the region. Mm-hmm. So they've set up a micro service center. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a couple of computer vision companies in there. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got some uh, like final assembly operations going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we've got some cold storage. So it's, it's a massive, massive mm-hmm. spread of companies. So, but we kind of see ourselves as like the picks and shovels of the gold rush. You know, we're really providing access mm-hmm. um, to tools that companies don't otherwise have access to. Mm-hmm. Um, there's that. And then the other piece, like on just sort of a head-to-head comparison uh, of any of our competitors, mm-hmm. um, we're very designed forward. Mm-hmm. We we try to create a nice aesthetic. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my background's been, I grew up around dirty mechanics workshops, Playing with cars when I was a kid, you know, covered in grease <laughs> head, head to toe. And then I went to the aircraft industry, which was a little cleaner, yeah. but it's still it's still pretty grubby. Right. Um, and I kind of thought there's no reason why we can't have a beautiful workspace, mm. but still provide access that people require to mm. run their businesses. Mm. So that's why, as you know, people see in the photos or in, in the videos that mm. you're going to post, mm. you know, there's a lot of natural timber. A lot of greenery. Mm. Uh, we cut holes in the warehouse wherever we can to let natural mm. light in. Right, I love it. So we really try to create a nice, positive working environment. Because another reason is people spend so much of their time at work. Mm-hmm. Why not make it a nice environment? I agree. Awesome. Okay, I know one of the things that um, we definitely want to we want to get to because uh, entrepreneurs like you are great visionaries. Uh, you think about the future. So let. Okay, I, I think our artists may have a have a, a good grasp of what you're talking about, and I hope you vision this, and uh, especially with some photos and things we'll we'll share. But now let's step back a minute, and where do you want to go with this? What's your let's talk let's talk vision a moment, because uh, I know you probably you know sleep three hours a night, and you think six hours about a vision or something. So talk about talk about that with us. This is exciting. This is very exciting. What you're doing? 
Yeah, we've got a small goal of world domination in this case. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't surprising me at all. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we want to see like 500 locations in the next five to seven years. All right. Like, um, across the US. And then wow. um, my co-founder, uh, Paola Barra, she's from Mexico City. So we want to expand into Mexico yeah. in, in the Latin market right. um, up to Canada. Uh, we've already made some inroads into the UK market. We've got some conversations happening. Mm. And then, of course, New Zealand and Australia. Oh, of course. So I've yeah. got an excuse to go home. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> right. You gotta, yeah. Yeah. Sure. But, I mean, you know, I've had a lot of different businesses in the past. So, you know, I've been a technology entrepreneur for the last 10 years, but I've had other businesses prior to that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, another business that I had before we got into technology, my brother and I were selling sports supplements online. Mm -hmm. And so we'd make a number of different brands of supplements and sell them online. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd send that up to 1,200 orders a day. So it was quite a high volume, small business. Mm -hmm. And we could have used a solution in our last business. All right. So I just look at my journey and the different things I've done. And Loloft would have been fantastic for a number of mm -hmm. different ventures. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think there's an opportunity to really disrupt commercial real estate, mm -hmm. you know, in this country and abroad. Because the industry is very old, it's very set in its ways. Um, I mean, as an example, we found out it's faster to buy new locations than it is to lease them. So for us to go into a lease, mm -hmm. we've got to spend you know a couple of months negotiating. Mm -hmm. And the the properties we are currently leasing, we have leases um, in the in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. They're all they're all the same, but they're all different. Mm -hmm. So it's the same basic thing. We're going in, we're paying the money to use the space. But, you know, our, our lease here at the Rogers location is 31 pages. Our Phoenix one's 45. Mm -hmm. Our Miami one's 66. Mm -hmm. You know, but, and they're all essentially the same thing, but they all take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that part of the industry is a little bit broken. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, our solution, you know, while it may not translate across into the larger tenants, mm -hmm. we're finding large companies are interested in taking space with us. Um, having a small footprint close to their customers, mm -hmm. um, partly for the proximity mm -hmm. and also the ease of transaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a member or a new potential member can come, do a tour, sign up that day. They can even move in the same day if they want. You know, so there's no yeah, yeah. no long negotiations with lawyers and redlining leases and things. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and then they can leave quickly as well. Mm -hmm. So the, they're not locked in. So we've really introduced a ton of flexibility mm. into the commercial leasing market. You know, it. I was recently at a healthcare conference, and uh, the uh, one of the speakers said, and it, it was a great conference uh, supported locally here with our focus. You know, with a focus on healthcare, improving healthcare. And yeah, you know, one of the speakers said, you know, healthcare industry is not going to change the industry. Entrepreneurs, people with new ideas, different thinking would change the industry. And I, th I thought that was a pretty powerful statement. You're saying the same thing that it's that the industry that the industry is broken, and, it, and and someone with new ideas, different thinking of technology back is going to change it. And and that's that is what really we need. We we need people like you and others looking at these industries that are broken and how do we how do we get it done quicker faster better and and move forward and it's really the consumer wins on this correct i mean the consumer is the winner here yeah exactly the, the consumer um small business market you're right you know i mean yeah small business is the backbone of any economy yes and if you can help grease the wheels and make life easier for them mm -hmm. um, the consumer is going to win as well because mm -hmm. they'll have better access to products um, and services um, in a more timely manner, mm -hmm. and and I think you're right. Like the, it's it's often people from outside an industry can disrupt an industry mm -hmm. because we're not blinded by how the industry works. So you know, we kind of came into the commercial property space with our own ideas, mm -hmm. and we didn't realise it wasn't available. Mm -hmm. You know, our intention was to find the five thousand square feet for a right. year, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't know. And you, you, you just, couldn't find it. Yeah, no, that's, that's not an option generally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where you have to carve off the back of someone else's big warehouse. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I think 
people in the industry can be constrained by the dogma of the industry. Mm-hmm. And it's been this way for so many years. Right. And changes can often just be, you know, small incremental changes. Right. Um, that's why we're excited. Yeah, sure. And it's, it's funny talking to industry experts, they say, oh, why didn't someone else think of this? Why did, <laughs> why didn't we think of this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's it's actually quite a simple concept. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, five hundred locations in the U.S. Uh, or and then, and then all these other countries outside the U.S. What a great vision you have! And you know, if I I believe you're going to make it happen, you and your team. I believe you'll do it, and and we want nothing but the best for you. And and you know, I hope someday I can say I talked to this guy when they had. <laughs> Just a few locations, <laughs> and now you know look what you're doing, and you're really going to change the whole world around this uh, supply chain and delivery, and just in time, all of that. It you know because that system's broken. We found that during the pandemic. You know how broken that uh, that was. And okay, now we have to have to sum up and close. But I, and this is what I, how I like to close this. Uh, and you and you you can say anything else you want to say too, but. <laughs> You know, one of the things, sitting across the table from my entrepreneur, I, I really want to know your insights about in, in your advice to other entrepreneurs. Because I, we're going to market this to entrepreneurs, okay? We have to, along with all of the other guests that we market this to. But talk to people like you, okay? Tell us, tell us about it. What's your advice? Probably the biggest one is don't take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a... Uh, you know, it's a rewarding journey, but it, it's often quite a challenging journey as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the life of an entrepreneur has a lot of ups and a lot of downs and a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I think the key is to be clear on the vision and you've just got to have that kind of spark inside yourself to believe that you can actually make it happen. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't know how it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of unknowns out there, but the, the, key, well, the key to my success so far has just been yeah, pointing in a direction, getting knocked down, get back up, mm-hmm. and just keep going. So, you know, you just need to keep going. Yeah. Uh, don't take the knocks too seriously. Right. Um, see if you can learn something from them. Mm-hmm. But it's really, yeah, you got to have the blinders on and just keep going. Yeah. You know, get back on the horse. Yeah. It's kind of, it's a relentless pursuit. <laughs> and and, and you, you never know what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So I'd say you just, you know, Try and find ways to stay positive. Mm-hmm. That's a big help. Um, I meditate. You know, I've done uh, transcendental meditation for a number of years. Mm-hmm. I found that's really good to clear my head and mm-hmm. problem solving. Mm-hmm. Um, and I read a lot of books. At the moment, I'm reading um, Ray Dalio's Principles, and I'm finding that very insightful. Um, so I find I, I get little little bits off different people and off of books, but. Um, any any way you can stay positive, um, surround yourself with good people, and you have to get pretty good at sort of, you know, weeding people out. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just just push. It takes a push mm-hmm. because I remember when I landed at um, in the US, I landed at a place called Rocket Space. Yeah, it was like a curated community of startups. It wasn't an incubator, but. We chose that place because Uber started their Spotify, Hootsuite, Supercell. They had like 18 unicorns, um, which for anyone who doesn't know, it's a company worth in excess of a billion dollars. They came out of that one environment. And I remember sitting down with the founder one time um, and he was saying, you know, finding product market fit is the key in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's like squirting a fire hose against a wall. You know, it's all the water's blowing back in your face. You yeah. can't really see what you're doing. But when you find that gap in the wall, you know, the water all goes through. Yeah. And then everything becomes very clear. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. It's kind of an entrepreneur's journey. Yeah. Sometimes you can't exactly see, you know, where, where the, where the gaps are in the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, but as long as you just keep pushing in that direction, you'll, you'll find them eventually. Mm. Mm. That's great advice. And I know the entrepreneurs and people that that want to be entrepreneurs are listening. That's been, that's encouraging to them. Um, any closing thoughts? Um, no, I mean, we're just excited to be in this region. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, really appreciative that you invited us onto the, the podcast. Um, and really just want to be, you know, a resource for small companies 
to sort of get going and mm -hmm. and provide that ecosystem that they feel like they're supported mm -hmm. um, and they don't have that pressure that they would otherwise have if they committed to a long-term lease. Mm -hmm. um, so, so part of what we try to do is create an environment for companies to collaborate as well. You know, it's a, a place that people want to come, hang out, bounce ideas off others, and you have those kind of happy little collisions, mm -hmm. um, have events, yeah. and and feel like it's a, it's a nice place to hang out, a nice yeah. place to run their business. So yeah. it's really supporting supporting the growth in this region and eventually you know, other regions as we expand. Brennan Howe, thank you. This has been such a great conversation. In fact, I've been looking forward to this for a long time since I, I visited your place and communication with uh, uh, many of your, your people. Uh, we only wish the best for you and your company. Uh, we want to we want to keep in touch. Uh, uh, we want to hear more, and maybe uh, someday we can come out and we can chat at your place, and uh, we can talk about your growth and and what what else you're going to be doing. But we know you'll be successful. Thank you for coming to Arkansas. We're glad to have you in Northwest Arkansas. We only, as I mentioned, we only w want the best for you. So. Thank you so much for listening and watching today. And you can all you can find us on your uh, on Spotify, on Apple, YouTube, and of course our website. So thank you. We appreciate our guests so much. Uh, we'll make sure we post all the information uh, how you can get in touch uh, with Loloff and how you can. Uh, uh, we'll also add an article to this with more more information. But again, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. It's been a great, great morning with you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, having me on the podcast. Okay. And we're very happy to be in Northwest Arkansas okay. and to be part of this ecosystem and this community. All right. Great. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And thank you again. Have a wonderful day.